Hey, what's up guys? So in today's video, we're going to go over Blackfield, the Hack the Box machine from the Hack the Box, what, what am I saying? Um, a machine from Hack the Box. Um, this is one of the hard difficulties from the Active Directory track list. Um, you can access that here under Labs, Tracks, and then scroll down a little bit. Um, I completed half of them. I think this is the last one I'm completing. Um, and so I either go and take PNPT or retake my OACP attempt. But anyways, the machine is active already and we have the IP. So we can get straight into it. And this machine took me a while to complete. Um, it was a lot of learning and information. And I had to use uh, the tags a lot. Um, the tags kind of helped me um, complete this machine as if as in like i was super lost at times um yeah and i won't deny that i had to help look at tags um look at write-ups up to a certain point until i got unstuck and yeah i mean it took me like about a week to complete but i learned um a lot of information so if we want to start we can start with ldap search tag h for the host and we already have it we just copied it then tag x tag s base and then naming context and this is just kind of to context get a name of the dc the domain controller so it's going to be blackfield at local and if we want a mousepad etsy host let's do that with pseudo privileges Etsy host we already have Blackfield already here so we do not need to edit that so now what we're gonna do is uh, enumerate our PC because uh, after some LDAP we did not get any um, usernames any information that we needed um, after that so for our PC client we're gonna use uh, our PC we're gonna use our PC client tag n Run all authentication with the user blank because we do not have any users and then provide the IP and it looks like we are in if we do enum dom users command uh, uh enum domain users denied query display info Query this info x is denied okay so we have no rights next we can do some smb enumeration with you know for linux let's start that uh, let's just copy this right here because let's go while that's running we can do some manual enumeration and kind of scope out let's see what shares um, we have access to with uh, no authentication, which is uh, another word, another way of saying um, anonymous login. So tag you, and then I mean tag L to list the shares. Unsuccessful. Let's just copy how they did it here. Well, how we did it. What was the difference, dude? Um, okay, there was a space. Interesting. So we see we have the um, uh, Sysvol, NetLog, on IPC. Those are the shares that are frequent and we see all the time. So nothing to look there. Um, not, that's not something that stands out. Something that stands out, though, dude, is we have the forensic share and the profiles. So let's try to access the profile share with smb client because um profile share we think maybe there's some usernames maybe there's some emails so this is our first target we're going to do tag n and then we're going to provide the ip provide the ip and then we're going to go and copy this right here with the dollar sign. 
copy that. And we are in, and if we dare, we get a whole list of usernames. A big list of usernames. So, how do we kind of um, get these usernames into, uh, kind of like, put it into a word list? Uh, we'll find out right now. Um, if we want to do some zone transfer and see if we can find any other um, domains, um, or subdomains, uh, we can use dig, and we kind of don't find anything interesting, so yeah, we can we can stop. We can stop with that. So now back to creating the users list. Now what we want to do is mount this share with sudo mount t sifs provide the ip provide the ip provide the ip provide the ip profiles with the dollar sign and then let's change it to amount clarify and that should be good and then we're gonna move uh we're gonna use move users Users that old um, ls tag l mount into users. So now, if we mouse pad users, we have the whole list of users. Interesting. Okay. So now. Now that we have this list of users, uh, let me see where is it right here. Let's move users into users. Okay, so here is where I kind of cleaned it up a little bit. So now we have this list of users. Now, when we have a list of usernames, what do we want to do in order to kind of uh, see if any um, usernames of the like any of these usernames are valid if we can find them in the domain, right? So in the domain controller. So what we want to do is we want to use Kerbroot, and for that we're going to do cd slash up. And where is Kerbroot? I don't know why I'm looking so far. And we're gonna use root user enum the domain which is blackfield that local uh, the DC which is this IP and then we're going to provide um, where we want to save this file. I mean the you the file that we have the users in so it's going to be in video users and if everything works correctly we will get a couple usernames here and that's when we actually start to uh, attack this let's just give it a second it usually takes a while I had a bunch of she's to this this machine was super fun though. I'm not going to lie, it was uh it was super interesting. So it's gonna go over this list. I mean, I think there's like what 300 usernames, so I wouldn't be surprised if this takes a good what two three five minutes. Sorry, it's midday, almost night now. Is gonna work. Probably should have done that because if it's running, then I didn't want to wait. Did I remove the users from here? Yeah, it's all good. So now we wait for this. If not, then I'm just going to kind of show the valid usernames we got because um, I'm really not trying to wait too long 
for this to start spitting out some usernames. I mean, the usernames are here. The mouse pad. Users. SVC, okay. So, the yeah, usernames list is good. It's just that this is taking a while. So what I'm going to do instead is just I'm going to show this screen right here. And we can see that everything is the same. So I'm not sure why it's taking so long. But we see that we have an audit member, audit 2020, a support, and then SVC backup. Oh, it's working now. OK, so we have the audit 2020. So while this is working, what we want to do now is check if these users, if we can, we should do some Astro Browsing, see if there's no authentication. So we can just kind of get their hash, not kind of, we, we are getting their hash. So what we're going to do is let's do locate. I mean, can we do, can, we, can I just do it like this? Or do I have to actually be in the in packet directory? I think I do have to be. Yeah, okay. Locate in packet. Uh, hold up. Cause do I? No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I can just locate in packet. Go to examples. And go like this. Python. Examples. And then we get get. And. P users. And then we're going to kind of do this, but for users, we have to customize this list. Let's customize. Um, no, we don't. We can use the same list. So this is kind of going to go over everybody and tell us uh, give us the hash of a valid user who doesn't have um, pre-authentication uh, enabled. And here we see we have it for the user support. So maybe we should start some notes. Maybe sublime. Subble. Cancel. And we have sublime here. And let's just kind of copy this hash into our notes. Okay. So we have a list of three valid users and we got the hash for support. So we are chilling. Now, in order to crack this hash, we're going to use hashcat mode. 18 to 100 and let's kind of save that hash hash and then we're going to use slash op rock you and then we're going to use force and we should have the password here at any moment see where it cracked it right here it's hashtag zero zero uh yeah black knight so let's copy this right here 
and we can kind of delete all this and we know that support at Blackfield's password is going to be Black Knight. So we're chilling. Um, if you wanted to check the mode, you would just go to uh, hashtag examples and you would paste the first string of the hash and you should get it. Let me just do that real quick. Mousepad hash. Copy this. And here you go. You get mode 18, the same mode we used for hash cap. So now that we have a password, what is the next thing we want to do? Well, we knew that there was some uh, shares that weren't accessible through uh, through a guest. So let's just copy this command right here. Um, let's just kind of go back into CD hack the box Blackfield video, and then let's just use crack map exec SMB the IP the user support with his IP I mean his password and shares and we see that he has read permissions to profiles net log on IPC sysful so um nothing too interesting let me see okay so um okay based on my notes I see here like it took me a while um this is where i got stuck originally in the in this box i had no idea what to do um i was kind of stuck for a lot a long time um you can't get a shell with uh, the support user and reading any of these shares gets you nowhere so this is where i kind of uh read into it a little bit and um a lot of people were using bloodhound the python version to what's it called to gather information about the domain so in order to do that we're going to do sudo sudo uh, uh, neo 4j start okay then we're going to run uh, give me one second we're going to run how we're going to run bloodhound so let's go here and then let's go bloodhound and then we're going to run this version of bloodhound if you run the linux version of bloodhound sometimes you get some weird um where it says like the file was uploaded or completed and it, it wasn't so it's just some false um yeah and then you really can't go anywhere from there so it's better for you to download this version i might link um all these tools in the description or just comment and i'll let you guys know so now now that this is going here you want to kind of go back and cd bloodhound.py and then oh we don't even need to you can just sudo python3 opt slash bloodhound pie and then we're gonna use all these flags which are gonna help us get information right here and we probably should use this in the directory where we want this information to be saved in because we do not want to use it okay so now it should start getting information we got the name of the domain and controller dc01 and we got a whole bunch of information now we have four json files now all we have to do is kind of go here and import them upload the data we go blackfield let's go to not smb video select these four and let's open them
Okay. So we're done. And then let's search up the support user because we have his password. And let's mark him as owned. So looking at all the users, groups, computers, we have 316 users. That's crazy. Um, okay. So let's go here, click on this. We see first degree group memberships, first degree local admin, first degree object control. And this is where we see that after looking around a little bit, you kind of see that our user support has force change password on the user audit 2020. So what is force change password? Let's kind of look into that. Where is, where did this go? Help. The user has the capability to change the user out of 2020's password without knowing the user's current password. And they give us some abuse info. But there is a link that lets you do this remotely via RPC client. Give me one second, guys. Okay, so here we see that we see uh, we can use it to carry, what's it called? To change the password of a user with set user info, target user 23 and then the password. So following this order, all we have to do is go back into here. Let's go RPC client, tag you, support, Let's copy the AP and uh, then have the password copy just for that. Now, all we have to do is set user info to. Give me one second, guys. Sorry. So now we're going to choose the user out of 2020. Just how it's spelled, caps and everything, 23. And let's change it to nleak123 with the exclamation mark. And it looks like we're successful. So now, if we go back over here and let's cancel this, and we kind of run uh, SMB again, but now with our password, nleak one two three and with the user out of 2020 we see that we have um we have access and not only that now we have read over a forensic share so thank you very much now in order to access the share we're going to use this command smb client forensic with the user 2020 and then we are going to use my password of and leak and leak one two three exclamation mark and it should drop us right in without a problem now for the tools this is just some tools they use for the forensics that they use so nothing too interesting here um for command outputs this is just some basic commands of, uh, you know, netstat, ipconfig. So again, nothing too interesting. And then we can see the into memory analysis. And there's just a bunch of zip files here. Now, what's important here and why is it here? So if we go back to the machine, the hack the box machine right here, where I said I used the tags, this kind of helped me out of this rabbit hole. Um, I saw that one of the tags was LSAS dump. So I decided to mget the LSAS, uh, LSAS zip. Yes. OK. 
Okay, and then it should be transferred. File Elsass empty. Okay, it hasn't finished yet. Let that quickly finish up. A, 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 A. Okay, so I got the information. Now, what do we do if we want to extract information from LSAS? Well, we have this article here that says parsing creds from LS LSAS exe dumps using PyPyCats, which is a Python version of MimiCats, right? Um, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use PyPyCats mini dump the file and then we should be good. Instead of running WMI Gazette with multiple commands, upload proc dump, dump LX, low size exe, download the dump files and copy it over to Windows host to use MimiCats, just install PyPyCats. Okay. So perfect. So with this knowledge, we can exit out of this and we're going to use PyPyCats LSA. Uh, mini dump is that mini dump? Yep, and then specify the LSAS. Oh, well, we should probably unzip this first and then PyPyCats LSA mini dump LSAS dump. So now we have the whole bunch of information. So let's redo this and save it into a dump. Now every mouse pad dump. We have um, information regarding SVC backup and we have his hash. And then we also have administrator's hash right here. So if we try um, with SVC backup, Let's see, crack map exec. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use winrm user as you see backup password. We don't have a password. We're just gonna use share. Actually, can we just use, and then we just use tag H and specify the hash. And let's see if that works. It looks like we are able to log in through WinRM. And if we wanted to access shares, we can probably do that as well. Let's do tag age that SVC backup. And this is just to make sure. And it looks like we are able to read and we even have write on the C drive. So with this knowledge boys, and girls, what we're gonna do is now we are going to get shell as SVC backup using evil WinRM using the hash we just got, and we are in and we can go into desktop and get the user text. Now, this is where it gets interesting. You can run, um, I'm so sorry, excuse me, you can run. Uh, win uh, win peas and all those privileged escalation scripts um, but it's always good to do some manual uh, enumeration first and that's all you needed really for this machine in this specific machine you see that he has the se backup privilege se restore privilege shut down and if we want to net user net user svc backup we kind of see that he also has backup operators. 
And this is something we saw in a, another machine. So, um, there is something weird about this because we've seen this um, privilege escalation method before. Um, and here's the article right here. Copy link to original. So, in this article, we're told to kind of save. Uh, we can do this right now, actually, because some of the article is still relevant to us. So, we're going to cd to the C drive. Excuse me. CD. We're going to make their temp and then CD temp. Now we're going to download SAM. Oh, wait, no. We're going to how it says here. We're going to reg save the SAM. And we only really need the system for this to work. So let's just save the system. CD temp. And then download. Well, not, well, not that system. And we should see it here sooner or later. It's loading up right now. I'm so sorry, guys. Gosh, it's been a long day. And I finished this box, this machine. I keep calling it a box. It's not. I finished this box or this machine. Um, uh, what's it called? Yeah, I finished this box today. And I decided to make the video today. Um, I might as well. So... Let's just look at here. Um, this is all the articles that I followed. Let's just make sure. Um, okay, no. So we also seen this, which is super interesting. We saw XCT's notes right here. And he goes over some common V's privilege abuses. And one of them was the SV backup SE restore privileges. Where he says, these privileges allow unrestricted read write access to every file on the system. They have to be elevated first, though, for which you can use the PS script. And for this, you can um, just kind of git clone this. So let's do that right now, actually. So let's git clone git. Let's cd. Let's. CD here, CD, SE, backup privilege, CMD, the CD bin, CD debug, and there we have it. We have both the files we need to transfer over. So we can do updog for 8000, and then let's just wait for this to download so that we can download it using IWR. I W I W I W Okay, let's just wait a couple seconds into We got eight percent. Okay. I'm just thinking like this box was like super fun. We can cancel this and kind of well we can't really OK, 
Okay, so we have the system right here. Now, in order to transfer it, we're gonna use, uh, we can, I mean, we can, yeah, sure. We're gonna use IWR HTTP, let's use ifconfig two and zero. Let's copy this, slash this one first. And then we're gonna stage it to out file and then back to that and that's not going to work because we don't have updog running wait how did that work Okay, so this is the command that should work. So I'm going to delete this file. So how do I uh, delete this file? We can just use remove uh, item. I see backup privileges. Okay. So we're going to where is it? Right here. Now that should be good. Okay. Now we're going to use the second one, the CMD lits. And let's kind of grab. That. And now we have both. So now with this information, what we're going to do is we're going to import both of them. So let's import and import it. Okay, now what else would we have missing? Now we have to do set SE backup privilege. Okay, get okay. SE backup privilege. Okay, and then we are going to copy the file from the ntd.dit file from the E drive into this directory um, get s a privilege give me a second Um, hold up. How did I do this? Did I? Okay. So let's just follow what I did first with my original, which was here. Give me a second. And uh, okay. Okay, never mind. So we don't even have to use the C drive to be honest. So we're gonna use the e, the regular C drive like we should have been. Copy Windows NTDS Windows. Okay. So since this doesn't work, 
we're just going to mouse pad script that the text is that how it went uh yeah we're gonna save this and then we're going to pull it with iwr again do this and then we should have it here give me a second Okay, so remove item let me see Okay, so now let's use pop dog for eight thousand here and then let's use the here okay so now we should be good and we are going to run this with disk shadow shadow slash s and then script dot text And then just let it run. By the way, guys, this is part of this article. Where is it? I don't think I linked it. Right here, where we copied the script. And this is what we're running right now. Okay. So now we should be able, to ex if it was exposed to the E drive, we should be able to do this successfully. Yeah. So now we got this and we're going to download the dip file. Well, not, that's not what we wanted. NTDS that dip file. Let's just let that run. And then finally, we're gonna locate in packet. And in order to extract this information, we are going to use in packet secret dump. We have used this in um, a previous video. So we're going to use Python secrets dump. Then we're gonna specify the NTDS file and then system, system, local, and then we should get the administrative shell. Now let's just give that a second to, to run. Um, yeah.
Okay, so now this is done and we can check if we have a uh, video and then we can ls and then we do have it here and then with the secret stump command we should get uh, an administrative shell not a shell i lied administrator and then we should here delete this hash and if we look up here we have administrators hash right here we can use this in evil winner m and we are in we can do who am i and we see that we are administrator net user administrator we have all the privileges so thank you guys for watching this video um i hope you enjoyed and learned a little bit um if it felt kind of rushed feel free to ask questions in the comments i kind of just wanted to go over the process and of what i did after a week of trying stuff i didn't want to spend too much time kind of going over every little thing i tried because this video would have been a long time um i tried some smart things and some not so smart things that costed me a lot of time um i kind of i'm enjoying this kind of tag uh feature from hack the box it's it allows us if we get stuck we don't necessarily have to go to a write-up or a video you can kind of just look here see the general direction of where this box um you know what it's trying to teach you it's intended uh a vulnerability or what's going on and you can kind of move on from there so i'm really enjoying that but yeah thank you guys for watching and the next video should be about some i'm going over some labs doing some uh pivoting labs so i'm going to be taking a month to doing that so hopefully i should be uploading sometime next month maybe uh further back depending on when I finish these labs depending whether um, how I feel about it and if not I'll update you guys with my second attempt OCP attempt or with my lab times any anything that I complete um yeah I'll kind of go over with you guys so thank you for guys for watching and I'll see you guys later